everyone, I'm Captain Courageous and I review old school modules and games and try to give them a fun and informative analysis. This week I'm taking my Wayback Machine to the year 1992 to Volo's Guide to Waterdeep. This comprehensive 240 page digest sized source book details the city of Waterdeep in the Forgotten Realms in a unique and fun way that makes this source book not only invaluable for a prospective DM who wishes to run a campaign in Waterdeep, but really any time a DM might wish to run a major metropolitan fantasy city. Before we begin, just a quick reminder that if you enjoy content like this, please subscribe if you haven't already. Give this video a like, comment below, and share in your favorite Facebook group so that others can enjoy it as well. If you've ever run a Waterdeep campaign using this book, please tell us about your favorite places and the adventures you had there. I know I love to read about them. Anyway, let's get started. Volo's Guide to Waterdeep was released in 1992 and authored by the creator of the Forgotten Realms himself, Ed Greenwood. The thing that makes this guide so much fun to read is that it is written from the perspective of two very interesting Forgotten Realms characters, the aforementioned Volothamp Gedarm and, of course, Elminster, the Sage of Shatterdale. The presentation of the guide is that of a traveler's guidebook with ratings for the quality of the various establishments and gives Volo's frequently amusing impressions of said places. To further add interest and hilarity to it all, Elminster's corrections and addendums accompany many of the entries with the idea that Volo isn't entirely reliable with all his information. This allows the DM to freely modify, change, or eliminate just about any entry as they see fit, especially if it conflicts with something the DM has already established within their campaign. This also makes the guide valuable even if you're running a 5th edition campaign using the newer adventures of Dungeons of the Mad Mage or Waterdeep Dragon Heist. Back in 2016, I did a massive two-part overview of the city with all the various products that have come out over the years for Waterdeep, and I promise if you are interested in this city, these two videos will be very helpful to you. In those videos, I was very much dismayed at the 4th edition changes made to the setting, and I'm happy to report that with 5th edition, almost all of the changes have been basically undone, and the city has returned to its former glory which is why Volo's Guide is still extremely useful to a DM wishing to run a campaign there. Volo has a great rating system for the various places detailed within, which is a 1 to 5 sort of thing, with 1 being the worst and 5 being the best, and symbols for the kind of place it is. Alleys get daggers, inns get smoke pipes, taverns get tankards, and of course prices get coins, allowing the DM to evaluate how to represent a place at a glance, but in a fun, role-playing sort of way. Waterdeep is broken up into seven wards, Dock Ward, Sea Ward, Trades Ward, Castle Ward, North Ward, Southern Ward, and of course, the City of the Dead. Volo's guide focuses on the six primary wards, and the guidebook is broken up accordingly. Each chapter covers a different ward, giving a fun overview of each and their prominent landmarks, written from the perspective of Volo. Then the various prominent homes, alleyways, festals, taverns, inns, gambling establishments, shops, warehouses, and so forth are detailed. To me, this is where the guidebook really shines, revealing the diverse character of the city in all its cosmopolitan glory. The number of fascinating NPCs that are detailed are too numerous to mention here, but several of them are standouts that anyone visiting the city should take the opportunity to check out. Some of the entries in the Traveler's Guide offer, offer up to five sections. The place, the prospect, the provender, the people, and Traveler's lore. These are the standout locations in the city and places the travelers will likely be recommended to visit. The place is usually a nice physical description of the building's exterior that allows the DM to creatively detail the establishment to their players. The prospect moves to interior details. The provender is the menu items for taverns, the room prices for inns, and so on. 
the people, details, the proprietor of the place, standout employees, or other perhaps even regular customers. Finally, the traveler's lore is frequently the most interesting part, at least it is for me, and many entries have this section. For example, the fiery flagon is said to have a secret cellar passage that leads to a long winding stair that in turn leads to deep caverns below Waterdeep and ultimately the shadow city of Skullport in Undermountain. Then there's the Gentle Mermaid, a gambling house in Northward. Legends tell of a wizard's curse that causes the death card to randomly appear in certain decks on occasion. A spectral scythe wielding figure appears and attacks the one who drew the card. Any spell makes the card and the apparition disappear, and the mermaid has wizards on standby in the event the card appears. The entries contain many such things that add intriguing story hooks, adventure seeds, and mystery to the City of Splendors, displaying its character and bringing it to life. Of course, you don't have to confine such things to the City of Waterdeep, and many of these entries could easily transplant and fit just about any of the inns, taverns, shops, or fest halls in your own fantasy city, or serve as ideal fuel for places of your own creation. Of course, the most important part of any city is its people, and while Waterdeep is home to many prominent and powerful NPCs, it is the everyday people that the player characters encounter that really breathes life and believability into a fantasy city such as this, and Volo's Guide details quite a few. There are some amazing NPCs as well. For example, at the Blushing Mermaid in Dock Ward, there is a fest hall, tavern, and inn. The proprietress is one Lady Althene Moonstar, and she keeps the peace and the liveliness of the place active and rowdiness to a minimum. Powerful and beautiful, in Elminster's notes, it is revealed that the lovely and congenial hostess is actually an arch lich who must drain the life force of the living two or three times a year to maintain her beauty and youth. The Lords of Waterdeep know of the lich and see her as a force of good as, supposedly, she confines her appetites to those customers who are said to be of an evil taint. While Lady Moonstar is a spectacular example of Waterdeep's NPCs, the Folks of Waterdeep section details many more common regular folk NPCs who reside within the city walls. There are many weird and strange places in Waterdeep, and the multitude of alleyways are detailed here as well, such as Farrah's Alley in Seaward, with a group of eerie skulls that argue amongst themselves. They may help or hinder a party or individual and might even attack with spells. There's the Prowl in Castle Ward. This alley is named for the acts of an eccentric nobleman who used to loose his pet panthers to stalk around it, terrorizing the neighborhood, until one of the cats grew exasperated, or just hungry, and ate him. The otherwise unimportant alley is the favorite hunting ground of a pair of skeletal hands that strangle folk from behind, leaving withering scars graven deep in the victim's throats where each finger has been. Some folk who have glanced into the alley at night but not entered have reported seeing two points of light close together in the air, like floating glowing eyes. This frightening killer doesn't strike often, four times a year at most, and seems adept at evading detection whenever powerful wizards and priests come looking for it. One of my favorite taverns in Waterdeep is the Crawling Spider. Here the inn is done up in papier-mâché cavern walls to resemble the Underdark. The attractive waitresses dressed in black bodysuits and masks to make them appear as drow elves, making it a favorite place for dwarves and other underground dwellers. And so on. And I've really just barely scratched the surface of the many intriguing and fascinating places that your players can visit in Waterdeep that are detailed in Volo's Guide. There is a small map included, which is basically a cropped version to allow it to fit inside the digest format of the guide, but it is the exact same map as the one from FR1 Waterdeep in the North. One of the things I've always appreciated about maps of Waterdeep is their consistency, and that's really put on display here as the travel guide is packed with street-level views of the various locations described herein. 
Here you can see I've done a little comparison between the interior guide detail map with the large scale map from FR1 and Volo's guide. And for fun, I also threw in the city system large scale map. The numbering system is consistent between these three supplements and I go into a lot more detail on them in my full water deep review. But to get an idea, this is what the full city system box set map looks like laid out on the floor. It's just massive. I highly recommend picking up the PDF version of this so that you can put together detail maps of your own. As always, links for Volo's guide and everything I'm showing you for drive through RPG is in the description. Finally, let's talk about organization. Volo's guide does a great job with its appendices wrangling all this information together so that you can get to it when you need it. The index of places groups the various locations by what they are. Inns, taverns, festals, shops, alleys, warehouses, unique sites, and so on. In this way, a DM can easily find the appropriate location when needed. The book is also copiously footnoted with game mechanics, Elminster notes, and references to other products, as well as what numbered location the place is on the map. Moreover, the more you use it, the more easily it becomes to find places that you want. The cover art for Volo's Guide is by Rob Rupel and is a near photographic likeness of Clyde Caldwell, one of TSR's classic artists himself. Interior art is by Valerie Velusic and her many pointillism portraits throughout the book do a great job of representing daily life in Waterdeep. Acquiring a copy of this tome on eBay can be quite expensive, as one might expect given its popularity, but if you use this book to run a game in Waterdeep, it's all heavy use, so many on sale have quite a bit of wear and tear. These can be purchased in the $30 to $40 range. Also keep in mind that many will no longer have the mini-map included, which to me isn't that big a deal, but those that are in good shape and have a map, you can expect to pay much more. Drive Through RPG has this available on PDF, of course, for only $9.99. I own this PDF from them myself, and it's great. The PDF is searchable, and the map comes as a separate PDF. The map is a very high resolution scan, all one piece. You can totally zoom in close to a particular section, making it very practical and useful to use during play or to make your own mini maps. Unfortunately, this is not yet available for print on demand, which is a real shame. So let's go ahead and take a look at Volo's Guide to Waterdeep on my D20 scale of style, presentation, and value. I find the choice to publish this reference work in a digest size format to be a good one. It makes it easy to carry around and read at your leisure and at the gaming table. It uses very little of that Dungeon Master Prime real estate. Further, the in-character narratives of both Volo and Elminster add considerable enjoyment to the reading, which makes it very easy to translate the flavor and style of the city at the gaming table. The artwork within is top-notch, and many street-level detail maps provided are interesting and practical to use. I'm just going to give this a natural 20 critical hit. Organizationally, this book is a home run. Once you recognize how the two appendices complement each other, either by building type or by its number on the map, very rarely can you not find what you're looking for. For example, the characters are in trades ward and need to find an inn. You can just look up inns in the back, look for the TW in parentheses and see that there's the gentle rest, gondolins, the gray serpent, the inn of the dripping dagger, or the unicorn's horn to choose from. You can also quickly assess that in the Dripping Dagger, the number at 168 on the map, so physical location can easily be ascertained. Furthermore, in the actual entries for each location, a footnote also displays the location number on the large map. So not only is this book fun to read, it's very practical to use. The only minor nit I have here is that sometimes, especially when you first start using the book, Refinding a direct footnote can be a little difficult. And this is a very minor nitpick, so I'll rate this a 19. So, value. 
let me say this straight up. Whether you're running an old school game or a D&D game using the newest 5th edition, if you're running a long-term Waterdeep campaign, this guide is a must-have and is invaluable. It originally sold in 1992 for only $9.95, so the PDF is the same cost as the original book. Auction prices are three times as much or more, but if you can find a $30 copy in decent shape, you really can't go wrong. Buy with confidence, as this is a supplement you will use over and over and over again for years, with many of the entries easily transferable to really any fantasy city, so I'll rate this as a value of 19 as well. Which brings my overall rating of Volo's Guide to Waterdeep to a 19. Amazing. If you can't tell, I have a deep admiration for this supplement. I ran a Waterdeep campaign for many, many years back in the 90s, and this book made my campaign with my players simply exploring the city, traveling to the various inns, taverns, and festivals, and having a great time, and I had a great time running it. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you found this review useful and helpful. As usual, I'd like to give a big shout out and thank you to all my Patreons. If you enjoyed this review, please subscribe and click the little bell so you'll get updates when I add new content. Please give this video a like, comment, and share. Join the channel's Facebook page, RPG Reviews, and consider supporting the channel by becoming a patron yourself. Or alternatively, you can just send a tip through the PayPal tip jar. A link is in the description. As always, my friends, may your d20 roll true and game on.